Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our brand new stamp set, Sprinkle with Joy, its coordinating dies, and its add-on die set too. This set is so adorable. It's got this great oven and that add-on set makes the oven open. So let's go ahead and check it out. First, of course, we have the oven, a cookie sheet, a rolled out sheet of cookie dough. We also have the rolling pin, of course, and these adorable cookie cutters in both a heart and star shape. We have vanilla frosting, a little canister here that sprinkles can come out of, which is so cute. And then we have different cookies. So we have a gingerbread man and a heart and a Christmas tree shape and a star shape too. Then we have these stamps that are actually the icing for the cookies. And this is how I like to do them. I like to stamp out the icing first and then I line up the stamps with them. So you've got to get right on top of it just like that and then you can stamp the outline stamp and then it looks like little frosting right in those cookies. We have two smiley faces which look adorable inside those cookies and on the oven too. And then great sentiment. So we have may your holidays be and then sprinkle with joy. And then we have sweet and then Christmas wishes to go with that. And then we have two fun phrases. We have open me and shake and bake for both the opening oven and shakers. And of course, we have an exclamation point to add to the end of those phrases. We also have this cute little heart, which I love stamping in the top of the oven. Now it's my favorite part, and that is coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm going to be adding some shading kind of around those buttons on the oven and then blending it out to the light on top. So I'll add my light marker, then my dark marker, and then blend that out with the light. Then I'll be doing a similar idea on the oven. So I'm going to add darkness towards the outside and then blend that to light towards the middle. And then I'll add darkness around the four edges of the oven and once again blend that out into light. And with just two markers you get a really dynamic, really cool look on this oven, kind of making it look like stainless steel. Next I'm going to bring in a darker shade for the burners on the oven and I'll just color those in just like that. And then also color in with that same dark marker the edge behind the buttons and the feet of the oven. I'm gonna bring in some pretty turquoise here and you'll see why later it's gonna match my paper. I'm gonna blend those out on the buttons. I think it adds a nice brightness to the oven. And I'll also color in both this band here for the handle and also the frame around the door of the oven. Now I'm also going to be coloring in the inside of the oven and you'll see why later. Now here I am going to color in the cookie sheet and I'm using the same grays, um, just making a little bit darker than the inside of the oven. Then I'll start working on my cookies. So I'm going to add some white gel pen there for the little buttons on the gingerbread man. And then I'm using different shades of brown to give my cookies kind of a little burnt edge on the outside. And I'm going to do the same thing for my cookie dough here, kind of adding that darkness and then blending it out with my light. Next, I will color in my rolling pin a nice dark brown. And then I'm going to work on my little sprinkle jar. So I'm adding a ton of red and green sprinkles by just putting little dots with my markers. And it looks really, really cool. And then next up, we'll color our vanilla frosting. And I found that if you blend the warm gray with a little bit of a light tan, you get kind of a vanilla look, which is kind of cool. Now here I wanted to show you another way to color in the oven and that's to just keep all of the darkness on the outside and then blend into light in the middle. So I'm keeping it dark on the outside then blending that light in the middle and that's a really, really cool look too. Now next we have all the dies. We have the coordinating dies and the add-on dies and you can bend them apart of the tabs or use your wire snips to separate them. And here I'm gonna line up my add-on die which I'm just gonna line up right there with the top part of my stamped image and use some post-it note tape to hold that in place. And then here I'm going to use the coordinating die and hold that in place also. Run it all through my die cut machine and then here are all of the images from this set. I just love that cookie sheet and how it fits perfectly in the oven with the little cookies on it is so sweet. And then here you can see the fun scenes that you can create with that rolling pin and cookie dough and the fun sprinkle jar. And then this is the oven we cut with the add-on die which I'm going to bend right at that perforated tab. And if you want more information about this add-on die, make sure to check out our assembly add-on die video, which I will link below in the description. Now here you'll see that I used the coordinating die to cut out some white cardstock with no stamping on it. And this is going to be the base for my opening oven. So you'll see that those two will line up together perfectly. 
Now I need to color the back of the oven, so I'm just using a gray marker that matches the front of the oven and just coloring in that whole area, kind of messy because you won't be able to see that part, and now you can just see the nice gray oven. I'm also going to use my Copic markers to color some of the accessories. So I'm going to color this little tag here pink with R20, and then I'll be using BG11 on the door handle for the oven to coordinate with the buttons that I colored earlier. Now I'm gonna use a pencil to make some guidelines. So I'm gonna trace right on the top of the oven there and then right at the top of the opening there of the window of the oven. And that's gonna tell me where to stamp my sentiment. So I'm gonna stamp may your holidays be between those two pencil lines and then erase those guidelines. Then I can add my cookie sheet with my gingerbread men and I'm ready to line these two up. So I am going to add some adhesive at the top and then along all of the sides of the back of the opening oven piece. So as you see, I'm just putting a bunch of tape runner right around those edges all the way around the whole die cut piece. Then I'm gonna stack them together almost like a deck of cards and push them together and they're gonna line up perfectly. Now it's time to create the handle. So the die created some embossed lines and I'm gonna fold them in just like that to create kind of a Z shape, so down and out. And then I can add some adhesive to the edges of those tabs. And then I can line it up with the door oven there, the little handle that's already there. So I'm gonna line up one edge and then the other edge to match. And now I've got a three-dimensional handle that's nice and easy to pull to open the oven. Now I'm going to stamp the open me from the stamp set on that little tag and use some silver sparkle lawn trimmings to tie that tag to my door handle. So I'll just thread that through and do a nice little double knot right around that handle. I'll trim off any excess string and then I'm also going to use a glue dot behind that tag just to hold it in the perfect place. So I'm going to add that glue dot right there and you'll see that it's going to hold that tag right off to the side. Now I made a last minute decision and I should have done this before I assembled the whole thing, but I'm gonna add some adhesive all around the inside part of that door. And that's because I wanna create an acetate window on the front of the door. So I've peeled up all of the liners of that tape that go around that whole rectangular opening. And I'm gonna take a piece of acetate that I trimmed down to fit and line that right up and stick it to that adhesive right there. And once I do that, I've now created this great little acetate window for it. And I think it's such a nice finishing touch. You can see it's a nice little window. And then when you open it, it really does give the feel of a real oven. Now that my oven is all ready to go, it's time to create the card base for it. So I'm gonna be using the new Perfectly Plaid Winter and mixing it with some Narwhal and Mermaid cardstock, which is a perfect match. I'm gonna use the cross-stitched rectangles because I feel like they kind of feel kitcheny, like it goes with the oven. I'm gonna trim down that narwhal to be the floor for the oven to sit on. And then I can layer that onto my mermaid cross-stitched rectangle piece. I am creating a card base here and I'm gonna layer my perfectly plaid winter paper right on top and then use some foam tape to layer my scene area on top of that. Then I'm gonna use even more foam tape for the oven and layer this right on top. And this is a nice, simple card to really let this opening oven shine. Now I went ahead and stamped Sprinkled with Joy in some mermaid ink, and I'm cutting it with a sentiment banner die. And then I'll use some foam tape on the back of that and layer that right on the bottom. And this is now continuing the sentiment. So when you open it, it says, may your holidays be, and the bottom part says Sprinkle with Joy. And I cannot get over how cute this is. When someone gets this, they are just gonna flip out because it is just so sweet and I think it would make anybody's day. Now that we've made kind of a cool interactive opening oven, I wanted to work with creating a fun scene for the oven. So I'm gonna be replicating my friend Jess's card that is so cool. And she used lots of glossy accents. So I put it right there on the door handle, on the buttons, and the sprinkle jar too. And I let those dry really, really well. And then now I'm gonna be creating a floor for this oven. So I'm using some vintage photo distress ink and I'm blending that onto some cardstock. And I'm just using one color because essentially I just want a custom color of cardstock and I really want it to be this color. So I'm gonna color that in and then I'm gonna stamp with wood grain backdrops and walnut ink to create a hardwood floor. I'm trimming this down to three quarters of an inch and then I'm gonna trim that to five and a half, half inches, which is the width of my scene, and then trim that down to a quarter and half an inch. Next, I'm just gonna be trimming random sizes pieces just so they look like planks. I'm just kind of trimming little ones and big ones. It doesn't really matter. As long as you've got different planks going on, it looks really, really cool. 
Now that I've trimmed all those pieces, I can start to form my floor. So you can see when you line them up, it really does look like planks of hardwood floor. So here I have a five and a half by four and a quarter inch white piece of cardstock, and I'm gonna start layering my whole scene on there. So I'm gonna layer all of these wood planks just like that, and I'm lining them up not perfectly so that you can kind of see the white in between so it really does have that plank look. Then I'm going to trim another piece of white cardstock, five and a half by three and a half, and this is going to be my wallpaper. So I'm going to use some Penelope's Blossoms here, a little tiny sprig from that stamp, and stamp that all around my white cardstock and celery stick ink. And this was actually really fun to do. I find it really relaxing to create these kind of continuous patterns and make my own pattern paper, which is really fun. Now the Snow Cool set has this tiny little dot, so I'm going to stamp that in lobster at the end of these sprigs to just kind of give a holly feel to it. So I'm going to fill up the whole card, and you can see how pretty this custom-made wallpaper I've now created. So I'm going to layer that right onto my card, and then I'm going to trim a piece of black cardstock, and I also have another piece of white cardstock that I'm going to be working with too. Now with this, I'm going to be trimming cabinets. So they are going to be one and a quarter inch by one inch, and one and a quarter inch by quarter inch. And these are going to be my cabinets. And I'm just drawing a little door handle there with a black pen, just freehanding it. And then I'm gonna layer my white cabinet base piece over my little wallpaper there. And then my black piece is going to be my granite countertop for this kitchen scene. Now here I've got my oven, which I'm gonna use for placement so that I know where to place my cabinet doors. Now that I've got that placement, I'm gonna use some foam tape between all of them to really give them a nice dimensional look on the card. And then it's time to start playing with the oven. So when we designed this oven, we made sure that it fit the smallest stitched rectangle frame. So this little frame is a perfect fit for the oven and gives it a really nice finished look. But then one of the really cool things you can do with this is create a shaker. So I'm gonna take some nice strong score tape here and line it all around my little rectangle frame there. And then I'm gonna take a piece of vellum and layer that behind the frame. And this is gonna create a window look just a little bit different than the acetate we used earlier. So it kind of looks like a frosted window. I am trimming down some foam squares and I'm gonna use these to create the well for my shaker. So I'm going all the way around that whole rectangle. I'm gonna run my powder tool around to take away any excess stickiness. I've added some red and green sequins to the middle of my oven. And now I'm going to take my shaker top and line that right over those sequins. And now you can see that the sequins can move, but you can still see the cookies inside, and I think it's just so cute. So I decided to take a little red piece of cardstock here and create a nice red border for this whole scene, and then I can adhere my oven shaker right down to these great little cabinets there. Now I'm gonna layer my sprinkles and my vanilla frosting, and also this cute little owl from Jump for Joy, and he's gonna be using one of the cookie cutters, which I just think is so sweet. And then I'll add one little cookie there just to finish off that cute little scene. Now I just had to shake it one more time before I continued with the rest of the card, but now it is time for the sentiment. So I'm going to stamp out Sprinkle with Joy and one of the little heart icing stamps and then use a sentiment banner die to die cut that. And then I'm just going to trim that off right at the end of the sentiment. I'll use some foam tape and layer that right onto my card. Now I'll create the card base for this card. I'll fold that right in half and adhere that to the back of the card. And then I'm going to add some red stickles to that heart just to bring a little more sparkle to the card. And here is the finished card. I think it is so cute and fun. And thank you so much to Jess and all of the other cute kitchen cabinet cards I've seen out there. Now here is a look at both cards that we created today. We have this awesome interactive opening oven and then a great kitchen cabinet scene that was really easy to create with this super awesome shaker in it. And I cannot wait to see what you guys create with this set and with the awesome interactive die. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.